Hey guys and gals, Homestead Prepper. Today's video is going to be about my experimental rocket stove. It uh, did a cameo in a recent video and some of y'all had some questions about it so I thought I'd expand on it a little bit. Now, uh, I started that about two years ago and I had some footage about the construction and I don't know what happened to it. I got busy and you know moved on to other stuff. But uh, basically when I was uh, looking to build a rocket stove it had to meet a couple criteria. And one of those criteria was it had to be simple to build. And that right there is pretty simple and straightforward. Now I know there's a lot of, you know, uh, rocket stoves out there on YouTube and they got pipes, tubes, they got, you know, holes that pick up the hot air and, you know, do all this stuff. And they're probably a lot more efficient. But this thing works really well for as simple as it goes together and it'll flat out boil some water. So, like I said, that was one of the criteria. It had to be easy to put together. The other uh, thing that I wanted is I wanted something self-feeding because, well, I'm lazy. No, no, I'm just kidding. I, I wanted something self-feeding so that I could, uh, you know, maybe do other stuff while I'm cooking, you know, instead of sitting there and, you know, uh, feeding that wood in on a uh, standard, what I call a standard rocket stove. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, maybe you enjoy the ritual of doing that. That's fine. But I'm just saying for me, for my needs, I wanted something that I could just uh, slam that fuel in there and go. Uh, the other benefit of this uh, J-tube thing right here is that it has two cooking surfaces. It has the one on the bottom there and it has the one on the top. So I can cook uh, two different things at the same time. And you can't do that on a regular rocket stove. Uh, not, not unless you've got a big griddle or something underneath it. You know, I don't know. But uh, I'm just saying this gives me the two-in-one option here. Um, and I say it's experimental. I'll take this off and take it a little closer here. And you can see where it's just tack welded. Got those tack welds. And I did that because I, I was playing around here and I didn't know how this was going to work out. I didn't want to have to grind, you know, the whole thing around. But for as um, little bit of effort I've got into it, it works extremely well. You can see that's just kind of on there. Now, uh, this started out with... Uh, a one to two to four ratio so it was one foot two foot and then four foot and the stack was just too darn high and I didn't get enough heat out of this end of it that right there worked great so I've progressively cut that down you can see a couple pieces over there and I'm thinking that probably having this a little taller I can put more fuel in it and I was thinking that I could cut this right here and let air more air come in that way and close that off and but you know what guys there's an old saying about leaving well enough alone so as good as this works i think i'm going to leave it alone um i've got some split that's live oak right there i've split those into smaller pieces this this will take bigger pieces of oak and i've got some uh, fuel here out of my yard those uh, palm fronds make an excellent starter cram that down there light it up on this end that gets the heat going that way and then you start your fire over here and it'll draw it out like that. Um, Y'all probably want to see me cook something. So I think um, my last outdoor cooking video, I think that was the underwater wood stove. And I uh, heated up about 80 or 90 gallons of water with just a couple pounds of wood. And then I used the excess heat to cook some scrambled eggs and bacon so i think i'm going to change it up a little bit this time i think we're going to go for a florida cracker dinner and uh florida cracker dinner is uh, fish and grits now the old florida crackers they would do uh fish and uh swamp cabbage which that's a swamp swamp cabbage about i guess about 30 feet up so i'm not going to be tackling that one we're just going to go with the grits so and in case any of y'all are wondering, I am uh, half Florida Cracker and half North Carolina Tar Heel, just in case anybody was wondering. All right, well let's uh, let's get some uh, let's get some food. Let's get this thing started up. Let's see if we can cook cook my dinner here and get this show on the road.
Well, that gets the uh, fire going the right way right there. Get a little more of this. All right, we got that going. Let's get that in there. This is stuff off of that swamp cabbage thing right there. Put a couple of that in there. Start with the smaller pieces. You see that is really starting to take off in there. You got Twigs in there. Say the smaller the fuel, the hotter it gets, but also the faster it burns. Now you can see where that smoke is coming out of there, so this obviously needs to be a little taller, so it'll do more of a draw here, and then it'll come out that way. So let's take a look here. Oh, that thing is, uh, you can get the camera too close, I'll melt it, but you can see that is really going to town right there. Let's put a couple pieces of this live oak in here, see what that does. Get some of the smaller pieces. If you put too much fuel in here, it blocks the airflow off. That's why I was thinking about maybe putting some other air that way. All right. I want to get us going anyway. Hoping it does. Okay. There we go. All right, we're going to let that burn. I need to go get... Need to get the stuff ready to cook. Okay guys, uh, this is actually round two. For whatever reason, my camera did not record my uh, all that work that I did here. So, all right, here we go. That there, a little bit of water. Let that boil. Right, I guess we can start on our fish while we're waiting that to wait for that to boil. Our pan. A little butter in here. Get all melted in there. All right, I got some fish here. Tilapia fillet. Put that on here. Put a little on there just to spice it up a little bit. 
also makes it look pretty. It makes it look good for the camera. And it tastes good too. Well guys, and you can't have fish without a little bit of garlic on there. Yeah, just, just a little, just a little smidge on there. And we gotta make it put that on there. So make it pretty. All right, we'll let that simmer and cook. All right, well that's starting to cook. All right, well that's starting to boil, so let's go ahead and throw our grits in there. Them grits are about done, so they will thicken up a little bit more. All right, let's uh, let's pull those off and we'll put those on my work table right there. get those wrapped up. Keep the bugs out of them. Alright, well I guess it's about time to flip that. Now we're going to have to move this pretty stuff here off to the side. Oh yeah, that's almost done. Okay, while this is finishing up here, I want to tell you all a quick story. Uh, many years ago, my parents took me and some friends up to Homosassa Springs, Florida, and we didn't have enough fishing poles to go around, so my dad went out in the woods and he cut some saplings down and he made everybody like a cane pole. And boy, we slayed the brim and we slayed the uh, Nile perch. Well, that's what uh, uh, tilapia were called back then, you know, Nile perch. And we didn't have a rocket stove, but my parents did have a Coleman stove and uh, my mom fried them up and boy it was delicious and it was some really good times and I, I feel very blessed to uh, have the parents that I had and what they showed me and what they well they shared it with my friends too and mom and dad I love you and I want to thank you both All right, well I think that is just about done right there Let's look in there yeah, you can see in there People say they don't know how to cook fish. Well, it's all white. It's done. Let me zoom in on that. So that is done. Let's, let's pull that off of there and take that inside. Okay, some of y'all are probably wondering what that was all about right there. And you can't have fish and grits without a good beverage. So we're going to make some coffee with my Dulce Mira pour over coffee filter. So we'll just take do two scoops. I'm going to try to do this with the camera here. this up Let's see if y'all can see this or not all right well let's pour it over
Put that all in there. You don't want it boiling hot. They said around 190 degrees. I don't have any way right now to test that. Just let that pour through there. Let that do its work right there. Oh, that looks good. Nice and hot. All right, well, I think that's good to go right there. You set that off, and there's my coffee. And we'll come back and clean this up later. Go eat my, go eat my dinner. Eat my cracker dinner. I want to show you, uh, I didn't really use a whole lot of wood right here. There was a lot of lag time trying to do the video. I put another piece in there. But uh, rocket stove performed very well. Let's, uh, let's try some of this stuff right here. Let's try the grits. Oh, that is perfect. Let's try our tilapia. Excellent. Boy, you can't be down home cooking on a rocket stove. Here's to all y'all. Oh, that coffee's good. Oh, man. That is just really good okay guys and gals that's uh i guess that's the end of my rocket stove story and i'm sticking to it and this is the homestead prepper out i just want to show you this was uh, round two how it came out if anybody was interested